this is Choo Choo Charles. Well, to be fair, this is Charles, but we'll get to him in just a moment. Choo Choo Charles is a brand new open world survival horror game that just released on Steam, and a big thank you to Two Star for allowing me to be able to play it and show it to you guys. In Choo Choo Charles, you show up to an island and inherit an old locomotive. You then go about upgrading, repairing, and adding weapons to your locomotive to try and take down Charles, a demon sentient spider train that's running amok and terrorizing the locals. You travel around this large island via train track, which you can get off and explore as much as you want to as well. You'll be doing jobs for NPCs. Oftentimes it's a fetch quest to get items to make a better weapon for your train, which you can swap back and forth to earn scrap to be able to upgrade and repair your train and to progress the story to which you are eventually trying to trap and take down Charles. Scrap's easy to find. You just find it by walking around the world and exploring the POIs that you come to and you see it laying all over the place, doing missions for the POIs and of course fighting Charles. And while you can explore the entire island on foot, you have no defenses or anything, so you have to rely on your train and make your way around this gigantic map. And at times you'll have to jump off the train and manually flip a switch to point a different direction you want to go to to figure out how to get to and from certain locations. Your train is easy enough to control. You have forwards, you have reverse, and you have stop via these three different levers. And that's pretty much it. Now, the map itself, you can kind of scroll around and you see you have different kinds of colors NPCs. The yellow ones are unnamed missions. They're not really relevant to anything specific. The red ones you have up here are how you get upgraded weapons for your train. And the blue ones are required to continue the storyline. And not only do you get to upgrade all the weapons on your train, but you can find paint laying around the world and use it to customize the color of your locomotive as well. The ambience of this game, the lighting, the visual, the sound is absolutely top notch. I have zero complaints about the way this game looks and sounds. It's absolutely gorgeous. You spend your time entirely at night, but you do have a different kind of rolling weather system. So at times a random thunderstorm will appear and now you have to deal with the rain as well. Just adds to the creepiness of the game. But old Charles isn't the only threat that you have to deal with in the game. Now, while he is, of course, the more present one and the star of this show, there's other rather creepy entities that you have to deal with as you move about doing missions, too. And one of my favorite parts of the game that's incredibly creepy is that as you're traveling along, sometimes Charles will show up off in the distance. You'll hear his horn getting closer and closer and you look off and you see his lights and his creepy eyes moving through the trees as he's kind of tracking you. He's not quite ready to attack you yet. You just know he's there and you see him running through the trees and the hillsides as you're trying to move about the map is really, really creepy. But it's so cool because you think everything's cool for a minute and then all of a sudden you hear that haunting little whistle and he appears up over the horizon and run along beside you and you're just waiting for him to finally decide to come and attack you. And then of course while fighting him you do have to deal with the fact that your train goes slower and slower and does less damage as it takes more damage. So you gotta switch weapons and try and fight him off and as you do enough damage to him, if you do enough damage to him he will give up the fight and eventually he will run off back into the woods and say screw this I'm out and you'll have to deal with him at a later time. So that's enough of a preview for the game, let's get into an actual mission shall we? All right, let's get into doing some gameplay, shall we? We parked over here. We are up at the far corner of the map. We've got two NPCs here. One is a weapon mission that we can either upgrade or add to our train, of course. And another one is a required one, which opens up some more of the storyline, basically. And then we got an optional one way off over here if we want to walk over there. So we're going to go do the one for the weapon guy first and see what he wants us to do. Paul asked me to design a new weapon to help you hunt Charles. Nice. Using my extensive demolitions experience, I made this rocket launcher. I'm okay with that. I've been wanting to see Warren's empire crumble for a long time. So building this puppy was a hell of an opportunity. Now that you're here, I need a few minutes to remove some safety features. Well, of course, of course. While I'm working on that, why don't you bring that box of rocket ammunition back here from inside the bunker down the rail? Can do. And that is how the NPC missions work out. You get a little mission from them, pops up and ding, there we go on the actual map itself. So you can see, you can put a little waypoint down there, see how far you have to go to get to it. 
So yes, while you do spend a lot of time on your train traveling around area, you will spend even more time on foot, moving about, doing missions for them, collecting scrap, which is kind of just laying all over the place. Um, scrap is not one of those things that I've had much time or much difficulty finding. And you get a lot of it just from completing the little missions, even the non-important ones. So those are always worth getting to. But I love the ambience of this game. It's absolutely fantastic. It's creepy. It's fun. The sounds are amazing. It runs amazingly, too. I mean, I've got it set up to max settings like Epic or whatever it is chose by default. And I'm rocking 60 FPS. I haven't seen it dip down below that yet. So I, I would absolutely say this game is very well optimized and ready for you to use and abuse. All right. How much of this do I have to get? I'm going to guess it's just up here. It'll pop up and tell you when you've completed it. Now, some of these missions that you do for the NPCs, they aren't just run up here, grab it, and run back. There is... Oh, hell. That's not what I thought I was doing. Uh, they are actually guarded. Wow, I was a little bit closer than I had originally planned. Okay. Uh, well, let's see what we got to get the rest of the rocket parts in here. Can I pick up you? I can. Nice. Oh, that's going to make a big boom, too. Oh, yeah. I haven't done this mission yet. Eh. So I'm really looking forward to playing this game and seeing how far I get into it. I'm not going to get too far into risking uh, spoiling the story for those who haven't figured it out yet or who I haven't played it yet. I just want to show off some of what the game looks like and how it plays. Nice. Got the critical mission, some more storyline. Version 1 and 2 fail, 13 second flight, and version 4. So the V4 rocket, that sounds familiar. I don't know where I've heard that from. Let's see, anything on the walls here? You will find that there's a lot of random stuff that you're just like, oh, can I pick this up? No, you can't. One of the nice things that I do like about it is that it highlights the stuff that you can interact with, whether it's the actual people. It kind of blinks if you can interact with them, if it's something you can pick up. Thought I heard Charlie off in the distance. It's uh, That's one of those things that's also creepy because you'll spend a lot of time, like I said, off your train running about doing different things, and you may not see Charlie for a little bit. Charles, I call him Charlie for short. We're, we're on a first name basis, so I can give him a nickname. But you may not see him for a little stints of time in there, but when he gets decided he's going to come mess with you, you'll start hearing his whistle over the hills and you'll see him like crawling up over the top of the hillside over there and his little lights blinking in between the trees. It's just creepy. Okay, let's see if we can complete this mission. The is in complete working order, so I'll let you take it from here. Nice. Oh, and take good care of it. Will do. After you're done, I have a few people to visit with it if you catch my drift. Gotcha. Sweet. Mission completion. Now, when we go back to our lovely locomotive over here, you'll see we have an additional option. We have the boomer, which is the rocket launcher, the derailleur, the bug spray. This is Bob. He's a big 50 cal. And let's see what this looks like. If we put the boomer on here. Nice. I don't want to waste... Well, actually, there's no wasting of rockets here because you have infinite ammo. You don't have to deal with it overheating. So let's fire at a tree and see what it does. Lovely. That's lovely. I need some homing missiles on this bad boy. Okay, so now that we finished out with that one, let's go see what this dude over here wants. Um, getting scrap from the NPCs for doing the missions is the way you'll get most of it. You can find scrapling all over the place. You get scrap from shooting uh, Charlie, of course. I I'm sure Eugene told you all about me, so I need not introduce myself. You're the local tweaker, right? Uh, name's Greg, by the way. I can tell. In case you haven't heard already, Warren, the mine boss, is keeping three monster eggs. I did hear that, and that is part of the actual main storyline. And there you have it. That is pretty much what the main goal is. Uh, when you start fighting Charlie and he shows up and just starts beating on you or whatever like that, if you do enough damage, he will retreat and eventually just disappear off into the woods for a little while until he recuperates and comes back at you. So there's this big plan amongst all the NPCs and the other things in this world to try and kill him permanently. So you have this series of missions that you're doing to try and lure him into one big final battle trap. And uh, let's see where he's going to put us for this one here. See, so see, sometimes the place that they give you you have to go is a good little trek around. So you will spend a lot of time going around in circles around this map. See, I've got a couple other missions 
See, this is where you go back when you get all the eggs, you summon him. There's a big thing over here. Then there's a, a mine where this is where one of the eggs are. This is one of the, where the eggs are. And so, yeah, you will, like I said, you'll spend a lot of time getting off your train. But you as a player have no weapons and no defenses. So when you're on the train, this is your only means of staying alive. So we got 23 scraps here. I can go ahead and repair you. Got 21 left. And as you can see, I've got some of these already leveled up here. Level 5, 8, and 8 that I've been getting from playing. So speed, I've got up. Damage, I don't have enough to raise that one. I don't have raise enough to raise that one as well. So I'm not worried about speed right now. I've got the train fully repaired. So what I'll save up a little more and get some more speed. So controlling the train is pretty simple. You got forwards, backwards, and stop. And there's a couple things that I really like about the game that seems simplistic. But one of those is the train its distance to stop really does kind of seem dependent on what you're wanting it to stop for and i know that seems kind of weird but like if there's a crossing coming up like let's see we got right up over here if i get real close to it and hit the brakes it seems like to me that it stops a lot faster than if i'm just out here in the wild and hitting the button flipping the lever here so it's like hey the game knows that you're getting close to a decision making thing it'll stop a little faster also one of the things that I'm most impressed with is your character has unlimited sprint. So since you're going to spend a lot of time running back and forth in places, you can just dead sprint the whole time, and it does not seem to matter in the slightest. Your character does not get slow. Is that Charlie right up there? No, that's just the light. Okay. Yo. Love the weather system in this, too. It does seem that it's dark all the time. I don't think there's like a day-night cycle. And the time that I've been playing this, it's only been dark. But it does have go from when it's a little bit clearer, easy to see. Hang on. Okay, so let's see if we can stop this. We need to make sure we're going the right direction. Yep. Okay, so here we have the split on the track. We don't need to flip the switch, I don't think. Which direction are we going? We're going up uh, that way. Okay, well, let's continue on and see if we can't get to this mine and we can get one of the eggs. And there's Charles coming to say hi. Let's... Let them know that we're ready to play too. Come get them, dude. You know you want to. I got a missile for you right here. Little bit of a slow reload on this thing. Uh-oh. Okay, so we get a little bit of scrap just for hitting him a couple times here and there. So if we can do enough damage, he'll go away and leave us alone for now. Uh-oh, we missed on that shot. Reload faster. Got him. Come on, maybe just a couple more times. Ooh, that one was right in the teeth. Did you like it, Charles? Huh? Yeah, you better run. You know where you can get some more if you're interested. Now we gotta fix the train. Sweet. Made it to our destination, and from here we are on foot. Which is totally fine. As you can see, we got a little bit of a trick to get down to the mine that's kind of right in the middle of this place. Now, whether or not it's actually guarded or not, I have no idea. The first one I went through, yeah, there was a guy walking around with a gun. And the NPCs are good shots. And they run almost as fast as you do. So you can't just, you know, dead sprint and get away from them. Now, you can lean either direction so you can look around corners without completely getting spotted. And most of them, like, whistle or talk to themselves. So you can kind of hear. You shouldn't be here. Oh, hell. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ow! I wish you never came here. Go, better run. Got him. Well, let's see how much damage he did to the train. I've never killed anybody with a rocket launcher in this game before, so that's always nice. <laughs> Uh, let's see, did you have any scrap on you or anything? Nope, just a creepy mask. These are the guys that are like, I don't know, the cult side, I guess, of Charlie. And they wear masks that look like the front of him. This evil little creepy looking things here. So, yeah, NPCs are not super friendly all the time. They're not really, really challenging to deal with, but they are fast and they are pretty good shots. All right, so we got the key. We can get inside this. Now we can run in and see if we can't find the key or see if we can't find the egg. Gather up all the scrap that we can. Dude, look at this. Does that not look freaking sweet? This nice little fog coming in here, the mist. 
the aim look at the way the lighting is i'm just a i'm just a huge fan of the way this game looks so i'm guessing we need to go that way but let's run down here and see if maybe there's any scrap or anything on the track at the end haha <laughs> gather all that you can i'm gonna have to pull that lever in a minute drop this bridge i guess now, since you don't have a way to fight the other NPCs, a lot of times what you have to do is just look to see what their pattern is and try and sneak around them. Okay, easy does it. Like I said, most of the time they're whistling or talking to themselves, so you can kind of use the sound to figure out which direction they're going. It sounds like he's right over that way, so we'll be real, real cautious before we go over there. Oh, and there is a lock picking system in the game. Sometimes you find these yellow chests laying around here, and this is the way the lock picking goes. It's like a little miniature game here. Oh, I missed it. You miss it, you just start over. You don't have a select number of lock picks you have or anything like that. It's just, just trying to get the circles to line up, and that's all it takes. Oh, nice. We got some blue paint. So now we can paint our train another color. That's how you go about finding the paints too. Sometimes they're in treasure, sometimes they're just like sitting out in places, but that's how you find those. Oh hell, he's coming right around the corner. Shh. Okay, so he's walking around that direction, which means he's going in a loop this way. We're gonna have to find another place to hide as we get up here. Uh, hang on, let's, let's see if we can get a chance for him to walk past us first before we throw any levers. That does not stay open for very long. That's what the eggs look like. Right there. Okay, so now we have two of the eggs. We're gonna have to find one more before we can get to the final battle. Uh oh, we got another whistling dude over here. Uh, I hope he's not coming around this corner. Oh! Okay, he didn't see us. See if we can get up and around here. This might be that last bridge that we saw over there. Okay, nice. Maybe some scrap up in there that we could poss uh, possibly get and, you know, sneak past that guy to be able to get. Oh, hell. I'm sorry. Ow, leave me alone. Bob and weave, bob and weave, bob and weave. And they will chase you for a while. That'll do it. All right, well, that's going to be the end of this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. A whole lot more left to see in this game, of course, but if you want to go check it out yourself, I don't want to spoil too much of it. I'm enjoying playing this, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, do me a favor, leave a like on it. If you're new here, maybe consider subscribing if you're not already so you don't miss out on future videos. And in the meantime, you guys have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you later.